for taking the time to come in. We had a very important meeting. There's a lot on our agenda from the CHC. We have a lot to talk about, representatives from the House and the Senate. And uh, I want to express my gratitude to the caucus for being willing to come down. We got a whole range of issues to discuss. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that uh, from uh, the American Rescue Plan to COVID, I told the doc that uh, if I had had my shot already, I'd ask him to give me one because he's been taking care of business. But um, uh, the America, in our view, uh, and I mean this sincerely, cannot succeed if it's, uh, unless Hispanic families succeed. You know, we talk about, I know I'm tired of hearing me say it, but for a year and a half, we talk about the idea that uh, what the last administration's failure to invest or being even be anywhere remotely positive. But like, the point I keep making to remind people, and people understand it, and, and uh, the recent polling nationwide shows they understand it, is that 24 out of every 100 kids in grade school right now is a Latino or Hispanic. The idea that we're not going to invest in what will be roughly 25% of the population by the time these kids are in our positions is just absolutely makes no sense. And that's what we're all about. We're going to talk about everything today, my guess is, from immigration to the, my job plan and what, how it worked for you and how it did and what you think we should be doing. We're also creating a whole lot of job opportunities in neighborhoods because for most of the where I come from and all of you come from, uh, is that it gets down to neighborhoods. It gets down to neighborhoods. Whether that grocery store is open, whether that local uh, bank is there, whether, they, whether or not you have a barber shop, a beauty shop, it all, all matters. It matters about people and their communities and how they belong. And so we're going to spend some time pushing forward. I'm going to spend some time trying to sell you all on what I think you're sold on, but the jobs bill and the aspects of the job bill. I want to talk a little strategy with you all as well, if it's okay. That's right with you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Now, the chairman's now chairman of the committee that I enjoyed more than anything I did in my whole career as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. So the vice president and I are looking forward to this meeting, and uh, we're going to try to get a, a lot done. And I think uh, it's always great uh, when a meeting starts off and you meet with a bunch of friends. <laughs> so thank you all for being That's what we're going to be talking about today. I know, George, I'm just going to ask you that one question because George is, uh, I, I've come to know George's family, uh, not just, uh, I'm in passing, I've spent time with him, I uh, spent time with his little daughter Gianna, you should see this beautiful child, uh, and uh, his brother, both brothers, as a matter of fact. Uh, and uh, so uh, um, I, I can only imagine the pressure and anxiety they're feeling. Uh, and so uh, I waited till the jury was sequestered, and, uh, and I called. And as uh, I wasn't going to say anything about it, but uh, Lonius said today on television, and he accurately said it was a private conversation because uh, uh, Joe understands what it's like to go through laws. And um, they're a good family. And they're calling for peace and tranquility, no matter what that verdict is. I'm praying the verdict is the right verdict, which is, I think it's overwhelming in my view. I wouldn't say that unless the, the jury was sequestered now, not hear me say that. But so we, we just talked a little, I want to know how they were doing, just personally. And we talked about personal things. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, so what was it like to be in the room after several years now of uh, not being allowed in that room? It was quite incredible, Lawrence, uh, to really be in the Oval Office with the President of the United States, and especially a President of the United States, such as President Biden, who truly genuinely cares about Hispanic Americans in our country, something that we haven't had in over four years uh, with the last administration. And what, what was on the agenda, immigration reform and what else? Well, we talked about how can we improve the lives of Hispanic Americans throughout the entire country. So we talked about the most pressing issue right now, which is vaccine equity. We talked about health care disparities and the need of more doctors in medically underserved areas. We talked about the American Jobs Plan and the American Families Plan and being able to 
help our middle class families by permanently extending the child tax credit, by giving the subsidies for child care, as well as increasing housing vouchers and making that mandatory uh, over the next 10 years. So we and we also talked about how can we prevent white supremacists from joining our military, federal law enforcement and desert and the uh, Department of Homeland Security. So there was a very robust conversation about policy, including immigration. Did you have suggestions about screening uh, for that for people joining the military? Well, there's a lot of uh, recommendations already by the Department of Defense. Seven, in fact, six of those have been implemented. We want all seven to be implemented, including codified uh, into law. And we want those extended into the federal law enforcement, as well as the Department of Homeland Security. For example, identifying tattoos and symbols that resemble uh, white supremacy uh, affiliations. Uh, so these are very important as we uh, combat the racial injustice and brutality against targeted minorities. Was there an agreed upon strategy for for the legislative approach to immigration reform? Yes, the the uh, the agreed upon strategy is that we need to get the Senate to pass the Farm Workforce Modernization Act, as well as the Dream and Promise Act. We passed that out of the House. We need the Senate to do it. So we really need 10 senators to do that. And we're going to move uh, the U.S. Citizenship Act, which will fix our broken immigration system increase our economy. Uh, t uh, a 2013 study showed that in 10 years, we can increase GDP by 1.4 trillion, uh, in create 2 million more jobs, uh, as well as increase the cumulative American income by $791 billion. So this is an economic uh, push. Now, in the case that we cannot do it through the normal process, and if we need to do a budget reconciliation, if we need to do the budget reconciliation, then the Congressional Hispanic Caucus will make its case to the parliamentarian that this indeed is a economic benefit, a budgetary benefit for the American uh, people. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus stopped by the Oval Office. Local Congressman Dr. Raul Ruiz is the chair of the committee, and I spoke to him about his meeting with the president. Speaking of the meeting with President Biden, you are the... Uh chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, and you met today with the president. So tell us about how that meeting went. Uh, the meeting was, was surreal, uh, Peter. Again, I, I think about uh, my uh, humble origins, a, a son of farm workers in Coachella, uh, first generation to graduate from high school. And then here I was leading a, a caucus to meet with the president to advocate for strong policies that will lift American families out of poverty that will build opportunities and ensure equity in not only our vaccine uh, uh, distribution, but also in the resource allocation within the next American jobs and next American family plan uh, in our infrastructure development. Uh, we also talked about immigration uh, and uh, the reform and the border surge uh, with very plausible ideas that will actually be helpful based on my experience as a doctor in the field, as a humanitarian, as one that has uh, provided humanitarian relief in Haiti and other locations. So the Biden administration has to staff up and build to meet the demands that exist currently. Uh, we recommended uh, that he develop a civilian humanitarian response corps that's modeled after the disaster medical assistance team, DMAT, whom I've worked alongside of with in Haiti and other locations, uh, composed of civilian social workers, case workers, nurses, and other personnel that will be tr uh, trained in humanitarian response and have employment protections. So when these cyclical surges happen, which they will continue regardless of who's president, then we can rapidly respond to them to ensure an orderly process to uh, make sure that the, the children are in the loving arms of a safe uh, relative, uh, that families have their, their due process in court, uh, and we can manage that. But, but also as important, Peter, is we discussed with Vice President Harris uh, the efforts to go into the root causes of these dangerous treks up north and journeys uh, and the, the uh, desperate reasons why families are leaving. The, they're leaving and escaping 
violence. They're, they're escaping corruption. They're escaping a decimated agricultural industry due to previous hurricanes uh, that causes uh, severe hunger and food insecurity. So working in collaboration with the administration and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, we're coming up with important ideas in order to solve those root causes so that we can minimize the frequency of surges and even potentially eliminate the, the root causes of why uh, they leave their countries to begin with. All right, Congressman Ruiz, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. White House right now, and we are waiting to uh, go to the Oval with the President and the Vice President, and we're going to talk about uh, infrastructure, healthcare, American Rescue Plan, healthcare equity, vaccine equity in our communities, making sure we're looking out for everyone uh, in our communities is the focus of our of our discussion, uh, immigration reform, all of these topics will be discussed and we look forward to working with the president and the vice president as partners uh, to deliver for our communities.